I don't think currently there is a county in Mississippi that does not have a hog walking on it right now. If populations keep expanding over the next 10 years, 10 to 15 years, like they've done the last 10 to 15 years, we're gonna go from about half of Mississippi land area occupied by wild hogs to 100%. A home just out on the edge of town, pigs had come into, into the fellow's yard there and rooted up his yard. And I heard a lot of people talking about it after that, we didn't realize there were these, you know, wild pigs in the area. Well, you know, they're, they're here. Seven years ago, as we are hunting, me and my son, I found a walla. I knew what it was when I saw it, and I asked a friend of mine who hunts in the same bottom, and he said he had actually saw a hog turkey hunting. The following year, we got to seeing more sign. The next year, the population exploded, and we said we're going to start trapping hogs. I did one site visit where probably 80% of the yard was rooted up. They did use a game camera, and I think they counted about 18 pigs in this group. If in 10 to 15 years, 100% is occupied by wild hogs, the damage estimates are, are gonna be out of control. It's gonna negatively impact so many people's lives. And we're gonna look back, back in the early 2000s, in 2010, 2015, and wish we had acted on it. So now, now's the time to act before it's too late. We've had hogs, wild hogs in Mississippi for probably well over 50 years. Um, and they were isolated in small pockets just like in a lot of the U.S. But it's really over the past 20 years and especially the last 15 to 10 is what we've seen this rapid expansion. We probably have a couple hundred thousand hogs in Mississippi, whereas in places like Texas you have in the millions. So we're, we're not there yet and we don't want to get there. But, but we certainly have enough to be causing a tremendous amount of damage. Initially, we thought, well, wow, that's neat. We've got pigs here that give us something else to hunt, and you know, it was kind of novel for us. Uh, but that, real quickly, that changed. And um, we began realizing, you know, the, the damage that they did, and, and it just uh, got to be where I didn't like to see pigs anymore, didn't want a pig anywhere near the place. My objective with my property is to promote wildlife as, as much as I can. My family and friends, we, we hunt here. I plant uh, probably 15 to 20 acres of food plots each year. And, uh, you know, it's really frustrating. When the pigs come through and destroy it, that's, that's gone. All that time and effort, the money that it costs to buy seed and fertilizer, um, you know, that effort's gone. The hog numbers have increased and our deer numbers have decreased. Uh, it's, it's affected our enjoyment of the property. My objective with this place is to make it into a, a premier wildlife habitat. It's very difficult to do with the pigs. I love this land. It's, uh, it's an important place uh, for me and my family. And in a lot of ways, my children have grown up here with me. We've, we've spent, uh, we spent a lot of time here together, a lot of quality time. I want my family to be able to continue to do this, you know, for many generations, I hope that they can. They get into a hay field and just, they can just tear it up like a bomb went off in it and it makes the ground just terribly rough. Of course, it kills what's there. It's just like somebody disc a fill up and didn't do anything to it. I mean, they just tear it up and grass grows back over and you don't even know what's there. Monetarily, the damage it does to us would be damage to our hay fields and then uh, just wear and tear on your equipment. I mean, banging around with a, a hay baler and a tractor is just rough on them, and the more you beat them up, the quicker they're gonna wear out. So, you know, you may not realize that the money's coming out of your pocket tomorrow, but five years down the road, well, here's a big bill, and it was caused by all this rough ground that you rode over. I'm a small time guy. I don't have a, a big profit margin to start with. So anytime that I waste money, it hurts my bottom end on the, you know, whether I make a profit or not. We've heard this so many times at our workshops when we're working uh, with, with landowners. Someone will come up and say, you know, five years ago we saw the first hog and we thought it was kind of cool. And literally all these people will say within three to five years, now they're completely out of control. Literally this animal can have a reproductive rate 
two times that of white-tailed deer. And everyone knows how many deer we have throughout the U.S. and throughout Mississippi. And so our role in extension is number one, we wanna educate people and let them know that you don't want this animal on your property. And then secondly, if you have hogs, if you are currently experiencing damage, let's educate you on one of the best, most cost-effective and efficient techniques for trapping them and uh, limiting their populations. The website that we created, wildpiginfo.com, has been a good delivery system. We have on there different material like how to build a trap. We have diagrams, uh, how to place trail cameras for monitoring the trap. We tried to think of everything possible that someone would want to know about wild hogs. The website that we have, the videos that we have, you know, we're, we're literally all throughout North America. A lot of people know Mississippi State Extension and what we're doing with, with, with the hog damage program. So I want to know and hope that Extension has played a role causing the decline, at least in some areas of wild hogs. Trapping wild hogs is a big challenge. The ones that have had success have pretty well followed our protocol that we outline. You've got to scout the area out, you put out trail cameras, you try to get an idea of how many hogs there are. No running dogs, no shooting while you're trying to trap, and uh, being able to get them in a trap. What I hope people will take away from this video is, is first of all an understanding of how serious this problem is so that we can, in general, the citizens of Mississippi can stand up and say, we don't want this. Hopefully, we can stop this in its tracks before it gets any worse.